A customer brought this sprocket over and he wants me to open up the hole to five eighths of an inch. I think it's like uh, nine sixteenths. And then to cut a three sixteenths key. And he said that uh, key in it is uh, five millimeter, a little over three sixteenths. He said just cut one on the other side. So um, I don't have a whole lot to take out of it. And that key is problematic. The key that's in there, if I run a drill down through that hole, the reason is it'll want to uh, flex off. And so anyhow, I decided I'll, I better do this on the milling machine. So I have a uh, set of V blocks here, okay? And notice how I milled the one down to be the same height as my vice jaws. Also notice that I drilled and tapped some holes behind my vice jaws. I have one here and one over here. And then I have a 3 8 clamp set that uh, most of the milling machine clamp sets are half inch and all the bolts that we typically use are half inch when we're mounting things in the T-slots of the milling table. But there is a 3 8 clamp set that I have here. And uh, what I did was I used one of the clamp blocks to secure this v-block into position so that I can put this in the in the vise it sets nice in three points it's held securely in three points here here and here and uh, then what I did was I uh, put my indicator my universal indicator holder and my indicator in and I actually preset this. I got that set to run pretty true. It's off just a little bit there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I got a reground end mill. I want to end up with five eighths of an inch. A hole that is five eighths of an inch. This is a reamer. I have a lot of reamers. Here's my reamer drawers. Um, and then I have some bigger reamers. And then up here I have, I have metric reamers. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this end mill through there first. It is a reground 5 8 inch end mill it's about five thousandths under then i'm going to run this uh reamer through it and it'll be very accurate and straight because i did it on the milling machine and then i'm going to broach the key the key slot um this is my broach set these are brooches these are bushings for various holes for various brooches these are keyway brooches. These are hex brooches. And uh, once I finish this hole, I'll take it over to the rack press, which is over there. And I'll show you how to broach a keyway. I put the end mill in, tighten the part up in the vise, running a little fast. Just something that I learned over the years. Just a natural instinct. I know about how fast it should go. It's a little fast. This uh, sprocket has a little bit of uh, hardness to them. Typically made out of, I think, 4140 medium carbon steel. And they usually flame harden teeth so that alloy of steel which is called a medium carbon steel has got some got some toughness to it and when you have that toughness you want to keep your speed down on your high speed cutters this is a high speed cutter not 
carbide. It's a steel cutter. It's uh, made out of a tool steel. Uh, unfortunately, for this size cutter, I'm right on the window of that high and low gear speed on the milling machine. You need to be at the highest speed in low gear. And I'm at the lowest speed in high gear. So there I got that done. I set a set a program that holds me in the center. And then I'm going to hit the button and I'm going to move over to here to get out of my way so that I can uh, take the cutter out and put another cutter in. I usually do this with two hands, so but I can't because I'm holding the camera, so let's, let's just do this. There. That worked. Now... Reamer fell into the slot. I'm going to put the reamer in and ream the hole. Okay, I put the reamer in. I set a repeat to go back and forth so I can keep going back and forth. Um, I'm going to put this in low gear. And the reason is I don't want to burn up my reamer. Now, it's a little slow. It feels about right. Uh, you need cutting oil. I have even used I have even used WD-40 for reaming, but this is actually better. It's my cool tool too. It's uh, used for tapping. It's a mouthful. Cool tool too. All right, I'm gonna ream. Barely taking anything at all. You can feel it. I put the broach bushing in the hole. I have it setting up here in the rack press. Uh, all I'm, I'm going to do is pull this handle down and I'm going to push this broach through that hole. But before, first thing I did was I I put the brooch in here like this and I eyeballed, lined up that threaded hole. My other key is over here. Um, so I put that in there like that. Bring the handle down. It's a crank handle here. And then there's a lever here that got to engage in that. And I'm pushing. Now, I have a bucket under there and I have some rags in it and things that give it a cushion. Because quite often, when the brooch gets through the hole, it falls. It falls on down and through and you can't grab it. Not quick enough to grab it. So. Second pass here. All right. If you don't have brooches, you can use an end mill a lot of times to get by. It's a trick in itself. I'll show you how to do that sometime. My next little sprocket project here is uh, this little one. He wants a uh, 12 millimeter hole and a 3 16 key. And as you can see, it's it's already oversized. Now, I tried to buy one. thought I'd buy a blank one. But they start off with a half inch hole, so it's already too big. So i got to repair this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my welder, my MIG welder in here. And I'm just going to fill that all the way up. I'm going to turn, put my amps on 200. I'm going to put my wire feed up pretty high. Uh, on my machine, it's a value of 6. And uh, 
I'm going to fill that up with weld. Um, before I do that, usually I'll run a uh, cutter through the hole if it's worn out because it's scrap metals and golded metal fused together and oils and get all the junk out and it cleans the hole. Well, this is a new sprocket, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put a bushing in it and weld it. I'm just going to weld it up solid. But uh, I did wash it. I have lacquer thinner that I used to clean everything. I washed it lacquer thinner. I cleaned off my aluminum plate. And as you can see, uh, I've used this aluminum plate in the past to do this kind of thing before, so it works pretty well. All right, I'm gonna get my lacquer thinner out of here, put it somewhere else, and I'm gonna weld this up. Created myself just a little bit more work with uh, making that, letting that get too hot. Should have had my amps turned down just a little bit more, a little bit. Uh, but I think I can fix this. I'm gonna give it some time to cool. Take like one little spot there might need a little weld. Yeah, I'd let it go. Before I welded this sprocket, I put it up in this milling machine, like I did the other one, and I zeroed in the hole. So what I'm going to do, I was able to put it back in here, and uh, what I'm going to do is center drill, drill, and ream. Kind of the rule of thumb for reaming is uh, you drill the hole about 1 64th or 1 32nd smaller than the reamer, depending on how big the reamer is. It's kind of a rule of thumb. I like to keep, uh, minimize how much the reamer is cutting off. I like to stay within the, closer to the 1 64th. But, so I'm going to go ahead and center drill right into that weld. This is called a combination drill and countersink or center drill. Uh, there's a lot of names. I'm 
metal fills fairly soft. Good. All that heat had to kneel that uh, had to kneel that sprocket. That's not an issue though. Go a little slower on the drill. I still have that program set to move over. Move over here. Get out of the way. And the reason I'm going to do that is I just want to make sure I got the right drill bit. Yeah, there's a little bit left there for reaming. All right, let's go back. Finish drilling. I don't have any cooling on this or anything. It's it won't hurt to put a little spray mist on it. Get nice white chips. If I want to run my drill bit faster, I can use coolant to ensure that it's not overheating so that I don't get into the gold colored uh, chip range. Or I can just take an extra few seconds and drill a little slower. And I'm going to put an end mill in after this. Before I run that reamer, I'm going to put an end mill in and either walk around the face of this or just spot face it off. I put a three quarter inch carbide end mill in here. I'm just going to. I moved the spindle down until I just touched off. I'm going to go through an extra operation here just to show you how to make that look pretty. Here's a really old school kind of cutter. It's called a fly cutter. There are many different, uh, they're homemade, and you use uh, carbide tools. The old typical lathe tool. Let me show you what I have in fly cutters. Here's a fly cutter, big one. A uh, couple smaller ones in there. I got all different shapes. And actually, a lot of times they're used as as boring bars to get the last uh, little bit out of a hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I watch my rotation here. I'm going to do this with one hand. It's a little tricky. Oh, come on. Get in gear. That way. Faster. Going down really slow, so just touch. Okay, I'm gonna go on. I want to go a little bit deeper. I'm just gonna raise my knee up a little bit. The crank is up pretty high. cutter that would have swung a little bigger circle would have done a little bit prettier of a job, but that's not bad. Put the reamer in, put it in low gear. Let's use a little WD-40 this time. A little bit quick for a reamer. It's better.
there. This is a precision 12 millimeter hole. I gotta cut his eighth inch keyway, which really doesn't make a lot of sense. It probably should be three millimeter, which is only seven thousandths uh, smaller. But I'm gonna do what the customer tells me to do. I'm gonna give him an eighth inch keyway. So I got the uh, one side of the sprocket looking really nice, and uh, the other side is all welded up yet and globbed on there. And it's quite a little bit of a challenge to hold this. I was trying to put it in this uh, this little three jaw, and one of the uh, sprocket teeth falls right into the uh, jaw, so it straddles it. So that won't work. Well. Here's an old trick. These are mandrels that you make. They've been made over the years. There's many of them. And uh, what you do is you drill and tap a hole and put a pipe plug in here. And you turn this down to fit. So I didn't have one for 12 millimeter over here in my lathe. I turned the lathe on. Uh, put my collet in. And I found. An expandable mandrel it had a half inch diameter which is 0.50 this is 12 millimeter so I turned it down and uh, I got a pretty snug fit right now so what I'll do is I put it on there tighten it up and uh, Um, I turned the second side, faced it off, cleaned it up in the real nice. I have a brooch, but uh, I don't have the right brooch bushing. There's a couple issues with it, so just for the purpose of this video, more so than anything, let's show you how to, how you can uh, cut a key in a pinch if you don't have a brooch. Brooches are very expensive. But anyhow, we got a 12 millimeter hole, so half of that is 6 millimeters. 6 millimeters is 0.236. And what we want to do is figure out the distance from here to where we stop. We're going to be plunging an end mill in here like this. We're going to plunge, 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 plunge until we get. And we're going to end up with a, a circle on the end instead. But that's okay because we're going to put a set screw in the part itself coming through here and it'll push down on the key um, so we take this number plus that number that's how far we want to go off center to this 0.298 dimension and uh, we'll go a little bit farther say we'll go 305 give it a couple extra thousands which is typical it's what you do when you cut a key slot you go a little deeper uh, the key the key, uh, the key material is one eighth by one eighth, and it's half in the sprocket and it's half in the shaft. So, um, in order to do this, I crank the speed up really quick. Uh, up here, I get close to red line. I'm not going to red line. All right, you can see the red line coming up there. Let's back down a little bit. All right. I'm going to drop the spindle. Now, the flute on my end mill is only about, I don't think it's quite 300 long. I'm going to try to go 300. I'm going to go 300 down until I go in 305. Then I'm going to go 600 down or about 580. I'll go two, 280 down first, and then I'll go I'll double that. And my sprocket is uh, about 0.77 thick, so I'm going to make three passes of pecking at it. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Just barely hitting. I went down 200. I'll go a little further. down 250. Um, I'm just going to move a couple thousands. 
I'm going to go down again. I'm going to do this until I get to 305 up here on the Y. I want to try to explain in a little more detail why I did what I did to cut that keyway. Um, I'm kind of using my vise here as a little drawing board. Um, this is side view of the sprocket in front view. Now, what I did was I come down in, I come down in here and pecked at it a certain depth like that. And the reason I did that was my flutes on my end mill are short. Now. Had I went all the way through and pecked like this, I would constantly be rubbing the shank of the end mill. And eventually it's gonna break. It's gonna get hot and break. So I pecked at it like that. And I remember the 305 number, I went over 305. And then I did a second step and I pecked at it. And instead of going over 305, I maybe went over 303. And then, I pecked all the way through and I went about 300 and that way I wasn't rubbing the side of the shank all the way through so you might ask why didn't I use a longer end mill well I have a longer end mill the longer end mill is going to flex and it's going to lead off it's just going to give you trouble um, I've learned from experience that it's uh, that's one way of doing it and uh, okay moving on uh, ideally, here's a front view of the sprocket here, okay, again. Ideally, you always have a set screw coming down over the key. Well, you'll too often you'll see set screws at 90 degrees. Well, ideally, that set screw should be, the set screw, instead of being 90 degrees from the first one, it should be 120 degrees from the first one. So if you think about the pushing forces, you're pushing and you're pushing right here and you're jamming up against here and here you're pushing here and jamming it up against here so here you have a potential of creating an opportunity for a little bit more wobble where this is just a little bit more solid and makes a little bit more sense from the directional forces that uh, a, proc a sprocket might see especially if the shaft's a little loose or, or it wears over time now, I have two M5 uh, set screws here, little shorties, and I'm gonna put the first one, I set up a block, set up a stop, came down here, basically eyeballed uh, this, this slot this way, and then I moved over about halfway. I centered, or I drilled the tap drill. Now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna set up my uh, hand tapping on my spindle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this you'll probably you probably never saw one of these before because I don't think anybody has one except me uh, this is something that I put up on here and I tighten with Allen wrenches and uh, I put the tap in here I put this in neutral up here right here and uh, I make sure my quill stop is down I put a little oil on the hole and I hand tap through. I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I bring the spindle down and uh, so I touch. And then I crank this. I'll, I'll feel a grabbing. And I just turn my tap through. It's nice and straight. In fact, I can feel when I'm all the way through. Just turns a lot easier. Okay, I'm through. Hand spin it out. The reason I'm, I made this hand turning device is I get sick of breaking taps, power tapping. Uh, just too much can happen and especially if you got a little chip on the tap or something you don't know it and next thing you know it's broken it's in the hole and you're spending hours on 
trying to get a broken tap out. All right, I'll do the other hole and set it up at 120 degrees to do the second hole. I indexed the part, drilled the second hole. Take that out. Take the drill bit out. I'm going to tap it. Put my turning device on here. I never run the milling machine with this on there. It vibrates. It uh, throws the balance out a little bit. Uh, come down until I touch it. And crank through. You don't even have to back off with these uh, spiral point taps. You can just go right on through if you want. But I like to back off a little bit. It breaks the chips. Have to back off if I use them for blind holes. That's how I manage to use them for blind holes. They're not made for blind holes. They're made for through holes. Um, but if you go a turn or a half turn and back off to break the chip. All right, so I wrote a description of what I did. I uh, wrote this as the large sprocket. I uh, bore and reamed the 5 8 cut keyway. And I'm going to charge 30 bucks. It took about a half hour. Um, this one here, a little more involved. Put one small sprocket, welded up oversized bore, remachined to 12 millimeter and cut keyway, drill and tap two set screws, um, two set screw holes, $70. And it's kind of a little bit cheap for that, but uh, you know, it's kind of relative because. They charge more than 70 bucks for a little sprocket. Sometimes on these little jobs, you just gotta, you know, keep the price down and uh, be reasonable. And bigger jobs come your way. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I got a lot of videos I want to make on machine shop uh, practices and uh, processes.